If your child has a food allergy, they can either have two different types of allergies, an immediate food allergy or a delayed food allergy. Now, the immediate food allergies are the ones that people recognize mo mostly because they occur immediately after eating the food or within one to two hours. Classically, the symptoms will be that the child develops hives, which is like a nettle rash or some swelling around the mouth or the eyes. Uh, the rash can extend to different parts of the body and then sometimes they can vomit or have loose stools. They might sneeze or rub their nose and rub their eyes. Rarely that they can also have anaphylaxis, which is where they have problems breathing. They can have a persistent cough or swollen tongue or difficulty breathing or wheezing, or they could have an impact on their blood pressure. So they might become dizzy or suddenly sleepy or pale or floppy. And this is all mediated by the immune system, by uh, a few different parts of the immune system, but mainly IgE. Then you have a different type of delayed food allergy. In this situation, children don't have immediate responses to the food, but will have more delayed responses. And this can be a wide range of symptoms. This can lead to itching, flare up of redness on the skin, some dry itchy patches like eczema, um, or little dots under the skin. It can also lead to some gut issues, such as in young babies, particularly severe colic, severe constipation, severe reflux. Um, the classical one, for example, is cow's milk proctored colitis, where the child can have bloody stools in the first few weeks of life through exposure to cow's milk. So those are the types of symptoms that you can find with delayed food allergies. And these are not mediated by IgE, but are mediated by a different part of the immune system. In the UK and in many other Western countries, the range of food allergy in children is between six to eight percent. In the UK, there was a recent study that showed that it was 7.1 percent. And of those, the common food allergies are egg first. So around five percent of children are allergic to egg cow's milk, and there's a wide range for cow's milk because cow's milk causes immediate food allergies and, and more commonly delayed food allergies. So, you know, two to three percent for immediate food allergies, but maybe more than that for delayed allergies. And then peanut allergy um, is also quite prevalent in children, around two to two and a half percent in the UK. Uh, and then there are other food allergies like tree nut allergy, sesame seed allergy, fish allergy, wheat allergy, soya allergy, kiwi allergy. And then there are rarer food allergies that we're starting to see like chia seed allergies and other foods that are being introduced into the diet. Children are not born with food allergy. They're actually not born with eczema either. They develop food allergy and eczema as they get older. There is, however, a very narrow window of opportunity for children that do develop eczema because they are at high risk of developing food allergy. So food allergy uh, often is present the first time the child eats the food. So for example, with peanut and egg, uh, very often the first time the child has an allergic reaction is the first time the child has eaten scrambled egg or has had a little bit of peanut butter on toast. And people wonder why that has happened because they think, well, they surely must have eaten it once before for the body to realize that they're going to become allergic to it. But what we now realize is that people can become allergic through the skin. So by having eczema, which is red and inflamed and angry on their skin, if they're exposed to these foods in the environment onto their skin, then they can have an increased risk of developing allergy to those foods. So yes, they can come on apparently suddenly, but that's because they were already allergic, but they just hadn't had that food yet. So in children that have a history of immediate food allergies, we have a range of accurate and uh, very uh, useful tests that we can now do to predict whether this child definitely has a food allergy. And we also have access to some research tests which can predict the severity and threshold level of the food reaction. So the ones that we commonly do when I see a patient in clinic is we will take a history and then we will do skin prick testing and we have specialist commercial 
extracts to the different foods, but parents can also bring some fresh fruits and vegetables if they're wondering about those. And we can do skin prick testing to all those, as well as inhalant allergens, which we do as a, a part of our practice as well. Then we can do blood testing for specific IgE to different foods. As I mentioned, it's driven by the antibody IgE. And we now have access to very sophisticated blood tests, which look at the parts of the protein within the food uh, so that you can see if the child is allergic to those parts of the protein. And that's very helpful to differentiate between uh, primary food allergy, which are the ones that can cause severe allergic reactions, or pollen food syndrome, which is because of hay fever and usually leads to mild reactions. And then we have access to uh, the basal activation test through research, which is uh, the tool that helps to assess severity and threshold reactions. That's for immediate food allergies. For delayed food allergies, it is more difficult. We do offer patch testing to food, uh, but the most uh, uh, accurate way to assess whether the child is allergic to that food or not is by doing a careful exclusion of that food with dietary uh, input to ensure that there's no nutritional harm from that, followed by reintroduction whilst keeping a diary of symptoms. So when a child is diagnosed with having an allergy, it's really important that the allergy has been confirmed with allergy testing. I have seen quite a few patients where they thought that they'd reacted to one food, whereas they had actually reacted to something else. So, for example, uh, a family came to see me because they thought their child had an egg allergy, but it turned out that the scrambled egg had been prepared with milk and the child was actually allergic to the milk, not the egg. So it's really important to get proper allergy testing to see what the child is allergic to. And sometimes it's not actually a food allergy. So that's the first thing to get a proper diagnosis. Once you have a proper diagnosis, then you need to be given advice on how to avoid that food, the precautions you need to take, such as reading um, allergy labels, how to deal with going out to restaurants, how to deal with um, uh, foods from takeaways, etc. And then you also need to have an emergency plan to know how to manage your food allergy. So you need to recognize when you're having an allergic reaction and you need to know what to do with each type of symptom. So I always provide my patients with an emergency treatment plan and for mild to moderate symptoms. So for example, they could have um, rash or swelling of the eyes or lips, or they might vomit, or they have a change in behavior. That's usually a mild to moderate reaction and that's managed with an antihistamine, whether that's a uh, periton or um, cetirizine. And then they need to know what to do if they have a more severe allergic reaction or an anaphylactic reaction, which could affect their airway or their breathing or their consciousness. And in that situation, they need to essentially put themselves in the right position. So if they're having problems with consciousness, they need to lie down with their legs raised. If they're having problems with their airway or with their breathing, they can sit up, but they should not be upright. And then they should use their adrenaline auto injector and we always provide training on how to do this in my clinic immediately. Uh, and then they need to stay in the same position, not get up and somebody needs to call 999 and say the words anaphylaxis. So I always provide prescriptions to my patients for the emergency treatments that they require, uh, which can be uh, issued privately or they can ask their GP to prescribe. Uh, and I always give them written information on how to manage that and written information about the type of food that we've confirmed an allergy to. I also have uh, dietitians that work closely with my practice and I can also refer to those dietitians for more advice on how to um, avoid the food and also how to supplement and have recipes to use alternative foods instead of that food. <laughs>